Uh, myrtle rust is a, a rust fungus. Um, its its um, scientific name is Austropuccinia sidii, formerly Puccinia sidii, uh, more commonly known as myrtle rust. Um, it's uh, a native to South America um, and was introduced into to Australia around about 2010. Um, unfortunately, probably accidentally introduced, and since then it has actually um, spread uh, pretty widely through the, the natural ecosystem, mainly on the east coast of Australia in New South Wales and Queensland. Um, and it is well entrenched um, east of the Great Dividing Range in, in many different ecosystems. Um, it's also affecting a, a range of different industries, uh, primarily uh, some of the, the native oil industries, lemon myrtle being, being the main one, uh, but also the nursery and garden industries. The biggest problem uh, for, with myrtle rust for Australia uh, is the fact that, that uh, we really have a really high number of, of myrtaceae, greater than 2,000 different species. They make up um, a large proportion of some of our fragile ecosystems. They also include some of our iconic species, uh, such as eucalyptus, melaleuca, or the bottle brush, um, and our lily pillies. Um, they're important from not only from an environmental but a socially, um, social perspective, from an indigenous um, side of things, uh, but also commercially. They're used obviously in, in gardens, landscaping, um, urban um, forestation, um, plus then obviously the, the uh, food and oil industries, uh, which, is a, which is a developing industry. Um, and the impacts range from, from very minor through to tree death. We're actually starting to see localised extinction of some of the species in our native ecosystems. Um, but from a, a, a commercial perspective, um, oil production in lemon myrtle plantations has been reduced in some areas and, and at some times by 70%. Um, and it's difficult to obviously control uh, being a food product and the use of fungicides is fairly limited. Most recently it's actually started to, to appear in New Zealand, um, which is a, obviously a significant threat um, and concern to their, their manuka industry, which relies on myrtaceae, or leptosperm species, but also some of their iconic species. Uh, when looking at some of these sites, particularly some of these wet sclerophyll sites, we're seeing a total uh, um, interruption in terms of the flowering and fruit production. Uh, some of these species just are not flowering or producing fruit. And these sites where myrtaceae are dominant, um, it's likely to have that flow on effect in that there's just no food source, um, be it flowers or, or fruit. Uh, similarly, in the Melaleuca um, quinquinervia ecosystems, which are uh, they're important species in these fragile uh, wetland systems, we're seeing a reduction in flowering rates. There are, are individuals that are resistant, but we're getting 20 to 30% uh, flowering uh, across the populations. So what impact is that having on, on, on some of our uh, flying fox species, some of these bird species that are migratory, particularly this time of year where it is a dominant flowering species? Um, we just don't know if some of those flow-on effects, and some of those effects may not be realised for, for many, many years. So this project was really designed at trying to come up way, with ways of assessing uh, impact both in a, in a glasshouse system and also native ecosystems so we can then work out then what species are going to be affected and but at the same time also working out how we might be able to manage uh, these particular issues within different industries and even the native ecosystem. From that research we've, we've been able to identify a range of different hosts um, that obviously have, have had importance from, from the commercial side of things and allowed management in terms of the nursery they've been able to select more resistant material and remove a lot of their susceptible species out of the systems. Um, but in terms of managing in the, the native ecosystems, that is going to be a real challenge going forward. Um, and I don't know that we'll come up with an easy solution. We've certainly identified which species um, are, should be priority in terms of conservation um, and which areas we, we see as being high risk in terms of long-term impact. Yeah, I mean the CRC has been fantastic. It's been the only, only support we've had in terms of funding for metal rust research. Uh, it's, it's obviously been a little bit unique for me coming from the forestry side of things where forestry research was never really in, in the CRC before. So it's given that opportunity to, I guess to, to meet a whole group of different people who, with a biosecurity focus and I guess open up um, opportunities to engage more um, and hopefully then develop more of a forestry angle as well uh, to integrate with the, the rest of horticulture and other agricultural crops. We've, we've now got two students, uh, one working on the lemon myrtle industry uh, Emily Lancaster, and one also working on the, the, the uh, impact in native ecosystems, um, Laura Fernandez, um, down at Macquarie University. Um, and they, their research has, has been valuable, um, both from an industry perspective and from an environmental perspective. And, and I think you know, they'll both have, have good careers going forward, but I think the, the CRC support and their structure with those programs has been excellent.